find him and kill him. A father and his daughters face each other at a turning point in their history. Reunited by fate on the road to honor and glory. Two secret agents and a reporter swept up in a storm of intrigue, deceit, and murder. Who's Jason Slade? The president of the Bank of Business and Trade International? No comment. No reporters. They are a family united against a common enemy. This is the biggest banking scandal in history. But I will be the man that history remembers. They are a family torn apart from within. You don't know anything about me. You don't know the whole story. But there is more to Jason Slade than any of them realize. The White House today continued to downplay rumors that a Soviet warhead detonator is missing. Now, forces beyond their control will change their lives forever. There's plenty of money out there. There's only one trigger, and I'm going to get it. The only thing I need to swear by is the $3 billion that you're going to pay me on delivery. If you get it for me, I'll pay you $5 million. Now, when can you get the trigger? Why hesitate? Do you still intend to sell don't make me wait too long. Jason Slade was tricked by the CIA. The guy in charge is your father. Come on, get up! Cynthia Rothrock, Donna Jason, honor and glory. We are here to discuss cybernetics, the wave of the future, the wave of justice. In a world where laws are enforced by cyborg police officers. I am Unit 7 of the Federal Division of Core Trackers. You are to be executed now. Now wait a minute. Special Agent Eric Phillips is part of a dying breed. You said you saved the senator's life today. Yeah, I'm a real hero. The terrorists are said to be members of a covert radical group who oppose computerized justice. We don't know anything about this guy. Bringing him into the fold at this time is a big mistake. When Phillips uncovers a plot to assassinate world leaders and replace them with cyborgs, he ends up fighting a system he swore to protect. Hey, wait a minute! The problem, Mr. Round's a traitor. Sending out a tracker as well. <laughs> what do you say we just call it a draw? You are to be executed. No, you are. Cybercorp is working its way deeper and deeper into our government, and pretty soon they are going to be untouchable. Do you understand? How do you stop a being whose sole purpose is to hunt and kill? The court tracker is the perfect android, the perfect assassin. Pity you weren't working for CyberCool. I'm gonna burn it down. We're in a new generation. Generation of soulless zombies trained to obey. What more could a god want? For one thing, and one thing only, he was the first one to bring up we should do a Don the Dragon Wilson, Don the Dragon Wilson movie. And I said, well, fuck it. If we're going to throw out people that we B rated stars, not <laughs> B rated, if we're throwing out C rated stars here, I'm going to throw mine out. And I said, we got to do something with Cynthia Roth Rock. But guess what we did? We combined two of them motherfuckers. Why did we combine them? We kind of fucked up. Oh, man. 
mean, I wouldn't say fucked up, but if you really think about it, um, this is kind of something that we, I think all three of us kind of had that moment of clarity here. So we're talking about Honor, Glory, and Cyber Trackers. These are two movies that when you look at them, you think, okay, these look like they're like late 80s movies. And then you come to find out these are like 90, 90, 93, 94 movies, and you're like, how? First of all, how, you know like, first, like, first of all, the how would you, how dare you try to deny me the chance of having us talk about Don the Dragon Wilson? Well, for one reason only, I have looked into it. Unlike JDF, his beef with uh, John Claude Van Damme is way more pettier. <laughs> How petty exactly? You might want to explain that for the folks, because I don't know. I didn't know they were beefing like that. Oh, they're not beefing. He's beefing. That's the problem. <laughs> so it's a one-sided beef, and Jean Claude doesn't know it. I think Jean Claude don't even know that nigga name. I would say yeah to that. I would say. I would say. It's funny how you have people that legit beef with Jean Claude. Like, um, did you ever see? This is, and this is a good one. Did you ever see that interview that Steven Seagal had with uh, old, oh, with uh, what's his name? With Arsenio Hall and asked him about Van Damme. And his response, he tried to be quote unquote nice, but you can clearly see that this dude was beefing with him. Well, first off, well, first off, that's a good question. That's a good question, Aaron O. The, the <laughs> Aaron O. <laughs> First off, Arsenio, beautiful question. Me and John Claude Van Damme, we're like brothers. We're nice. We talk. We do kung fu with it each is. other. No, see, D, you might as well save your breath because he said none of that. All he said. Oh, I know John Claude. Look, I know for a fact Steven Seagal did what I like to call Steven Seagal, Steven Seagal shade, which is he squints his eyes a little bit more squinty than they already are. <laughs> they were super squint for one thing, and then the other thing, when he responded back, he just said, <laughs> he just gave him that look like, well, do you believe that? He's like, do you believe he's a martial artist? Do you think he's, you know, the real deal? And he just said, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say no, but there's just a lot of things I disagree with. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. I haven't done none of my fucking stunt work properly since 1994 has a problem with John Claude Van Damme. Always had. I, I just want to know what was everybody's beef with Van Damme. Seriously. I think Van Damme, I think Van Damme was a dick. But we really got... Uh, no Don, shit. Well, yeah, there's that. But what really got Don Wilson to be pissed off at him is that Don Wilson is really in love with his martial art. He's a martial artist. So when pure you martial hear, artist. <laughs> what do you say? It's a pure martial artist. <laughs> exactly. So when you hear like uh uh when you hear all the shit, John like you're John Claude Van Damme is a kickboxing master, that got under his skin. And this motherfucker has been going on the longest, most unnecessary beef that anybody has ever had with John Claude Van Damme. He was like, I'm better than him and all the rest of that. And if you look at um, um, the Dragons fucking um, win loss record in kickboxing. No bullshit. He is legit one of the greats. Hmm. He really is. And yeah, he could probably kick John Claude Van Damme's ass. Here's the problem. Nobody gives a shit but him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but Honor and Glory. I watched that one, right? Um, so I have to put a big shout out to. Uh, one of the fight choreographers, Chuck Jeffries, a.k.a. Not Eddie Murphy. Um, yep. This movie, you could pick apart where in PG County in Virginia this movie took place. I think the very first scene where she was reporting in, in Washington, when she said live in Washington, D.C., here's the D. Bitch, that's Crystal City. I ain't stupid. Uh, dude, <laughs> but there was points where I was like, that looks like Upper Marlboro. That looks like Bowie. Could be Fort Washington. Oh, Chambridge? No, Bet. That, that we one past, part was clearly past, Landover. No, when they went past Oh, that it was one, Landover too. Yeah. Hold on, when yeah. they went past that one neighborhood where uh what was it? Like where the like, the dude who had the camera was getting his ass kicked by not <laughs> by not Asian Terminator. 
Um, <laughs> when I saw the houses, I was like, bro, that looks like, that looks straight up looking like Akakik. It did, doesn't it? I was like, you can just tell by the driveway structure and all that. And like, how can you tell? You can tell. If you lived in this area, you could fucking tell, man. I like what, uh, the one thing that also is weird with this movie is that not only does it have a stuntman who, if you look at his fucking record, oh my God, he's done a lot of shit. Then you look at Cynthia Rothrock, who doesn't, God bless her. He doesn't. She she doesn't say no to nothing. But <laughs> she was in a lot of these. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other the other chick that was in it, I think her name was like Donna something or jo- Jones something, whatever her name was. She's yeah. only been in four movies, but she was in fucking three big straight to DVD. I mean, straight to VHS movies, man. Then you got the villain of this, who is a terrible actor. Terrible actor. <laughs> He's been in pretty much every Cynthia Rothrock movie ever. Ever. Oh, believe so, me, I enjoyed. I enjoyed every bit of John Miller, aka Jason Slade. Jason <laughs> Slade. The Slade. best one of the best lines. One of the best lines he had in the movie was, "Sir, your dare were fall. Your dare were fall. Uh, President Reagan is at at such and such time. Yeah, I don't care about that old bastard. I." <laughs> Died. Um, I could. I I, 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 I dub. I dub Jason Slade, aka not Joe Piscopo. <laughs> he, you know what I dub him? Terry Silver's frat buddy. Bro, he flat. Yo, when homeboy was like, "Please don't let me die in this warehouse." No, okay, let me get this right. Oh, you talking about when he? Hold on, you're talking about when he was kicking the ass of not Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Crack era Robert Downey Jr. That is crack era Robert Downey Jr. No bullshit. That's Robert doing a hit. (laughs) That's Robert after he did a hit, man. Shit. That was less than zero, Robert. It's like, oh, shit. Oh, man. Whose dick you had to suck in this one, man? No, seriously. If you've never seen less than zero, he goes down on fucking uh, James Spader. That fucking happened, (laughs) y'all. So you got my $7,000? Oh, man. (laughs) Oh man, this dick is not going to suck itself. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing: here's what these movies have in common. Uh, both characters get thrown around in slow motion to show power because, dear God, that's what you did when your when your budget was not that great to show power. Slow motion, though. The slow motion that no. Then, then on top of that, he has to say something about him being a god. I don't like, dude, you just beat up an accountant, dog. It ain't like you beat motherfucking Batman, dude. Bear in mind, <laughs> bear in mind, the bad guy in this movie, Jason Slade, is like, kind of like a, a, um, what's his face character in The Departed? It's like, so let me get this right. You sold nuke codes to terrorists oh, and you're yeah. a petty thief. Oh, you're talking about, uh, like, you're talking about, um, Jack Nicholson's character? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, you sold... Where he was an FBI informant yeah, the whole like, time. <laughs> except, except Jason Slade is not an FBI informant. He just, he's just a shitty bad guy that works outside of Tyson's Corner. Tyson's 2, apparently, I guess. I don't know. Or, like, or like Alan Rickman in Die Hard, where he's like, holy God, like, oh my God, this dude is like a, a freaking terrorist mastermind. No, he's just, just a thief. Com- I- Okay. I have two guns now. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, he's no. a common well, no, thief. At, no. like, by the, like, at, the end of the, at the end of the movie, he's nothing more than a common thief. It's like, with, 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 Mr., with, Mr., with Mr. Slate, he has, a, he has a business that requires him, requires him to do fucking katas on his fucking deck. Yeah, he's doing, <laughs> I love the fact that he's doing katas with uh, yeah, I'm sorry. He's doing katas with the rings that Fang Wei uses in Tekken 5. I'm like, yo, this motherfucking demo Tekken... Oh, here's me. This demo <laughs> Tekken 8 is shit, yo. On his deck in Fort Washington. <laughs> 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 Bro, I'm sorry, folks. I swear to God, if you watch this movie on YouTube... Again, this just harkens back to the fact that they couldn't film this movie now because there's like a shit ton of fucking houses in the wooded areas that they filmed it at now. So it's like bullshit, bullshit. They'll st- they'll they'll shoot all that shit in Laurel, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm bullshit? You hold on, and they look, and they'll still do that shit in Upper Marlboro because there's nothing but woods out in Upper Marlboro too. True, true. Sure, you're right. You're right. Uh, hold on, hold on, hey Chris, and sure, you'll see oh, uh, Barack Obama Jr. Barack Obama. 
elementary school in the background. Shout out to that little school. Sure, you might see that in the background. But still. You might see the Amish. <laughs> you, will, Maybe. you will also see uh, B-roll shots of the now desolate area known as Largo Town Center. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my God! Come on, dude. You mean to tell me you cannot have a fucking scene because they didn't knock? They're still knocking shit down over there. Apparently, you can't do a scene in that graveyard of a of a fucking parking lot called Landover Mall. You Can mean to tell me? This? I'm mad that we didn't get Cap Center. No Cap Center. You no, know what? I am too. No, no Cap I Center. Too. No Cap Center and no US Air Arena. No, I mean that. Well, that's the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> the same, same, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but here's no, the no, thing. hold on, hold on, hold on. If we're going to just say, if now, 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 okay, real talk, real talk. I understand that that this this wasn't that type of movie, but I couldn't get a Chuck song, man. Not one motherfucker. Nope. <laughs> no. Not one goddamn go. Not song. one EU song. Not one EU song, nigga. I ain't asking for nothing really hard or nothing like that. I'm just saying. Hey, look, look. I tell you what, though. I tell you who wasn't in this movie. Fucking Baltimore. Thank God. Yep. It's amazing that at the same time they were filming a movie in Baltimore that was supposed to be in D.C. and had a much bigger budget, and yet it's kind of a shittier movie. That, <laughs> that is not yeah, a shittier what's that movie. movie? <laughs> it's just as shitty as this movie. Meteor Man. Meteor. Oh, oh, shit. Damn. Meteor Man. It was Meteor Man. <laughs> Let me make that very clear. In the world of fucking Endgame, in a world that has given me Dark Knight, Fucking Meteor Man ain't shit. I'm sorry, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. I just also, nostalgia. Side, black side, person. Side, Nigga, I got Black Panther now. I don't give a shit. Side, side note, we love you, Robert. We know you tried. We love Oh, I love Robert <laughs> Death. Yes, I We know you tried, dog. You should have never got that motherfucking um you should have never got that rapist in the motherfucking movie, man. Yeah, I said it, Eddie Griffin. Anyway. <laughs> hey, shout out to Don Cheadle. Uh, oh, she was in that movie, man. That was the Don Cheadle you know in his golden in his golden hair. Oh, uh, if y'all want to, if y'all want to hear something very and, funny, oh, real go quick, with, D, real quick, D, real oh. quick, and also shout out to Big Daddy Kane for not giving a shit that entire movie. <laughs> he paid off a car note, dog. What are you talking about? No, he didn't no, care. The no. Whole time he acted in that shit. movie, he did not care. Bullshit. His not giving a shit was will never. Never beat out Luther Vandross being a hitman. There's nothing. You, you no, first of all, first of all, that was silent Luther. Dude, they told him, "Hey, Luther, Luther, was, he came on set ready, like, oh man, what's my lines? Here's the thing, Luther. Um, <laughs> yes, you're not, you're not gonna be talking in this movie, <laughs> like at all, at all. Oh, huh, that's that's actually uh, that works out better. I actually got concert later tonight, so I can save my voice. Thank you, thank you, Robert. Thank you. You know, I can't be in the background. Is it going to be? Are you going to be? Oh, are you going to be? Hey, Luther, Luther, some, calm down. Luther. Calm down. That's an angelic voice, but we don't need it for this movie. Luther Martha Gibbs <laughs> throws a random penny at Luther as that happens. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Luther James Earl Jones does too. <laughs> Luther playing the most non threatening hitchman. I you know what? Semi threatening. Semi threatening. The no, silence he helped. No, it wasn't. The silence no, he helped. wasn't. Nigga, ABC as Golden Lords were more threatening than Luther. Don't Thank start you. that shit with me. Thank you. First off, first, first off, G- Gorkin was threatened by Luther Vangel since he was the only black dude out of that group. All right, I'll give you that. <laughs> just saying. Now, also, here's the thing. Also, also, let's just be honest. Aisha was the only hit that ABC ever had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's common knowledge, man. Yeah, yeah, which I got to be. What playground, I, 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 Shut up. Can, can, I, can I be honest with you? I... I really feel ABC, they were supposed to do Do Me Dirty, and Bill Biv DeVoe just took it from them. You really think so? Uh, backstage, they? underage. I would agree. Nigga, nigga, I think nigga, that was an ABC forget. song, dog. I agree. Nigga, I don't think no little kid was going to say, backstage, y'all let's see. <laughs> I think <laughs> so. The I, the M, the L, the Y, yo. I need a body bag. You'd be like, this little nigga talking about condoms? <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, Chris, hey, Chris, here comes the 13 year old and the 12 year old. Do me, baby. Yo, yo. They gave it to the right person. They gave it to the right people. Bell Beard DeVoe. Because Michael Biven stayed banging 15 year olds. Anyway. Um, I I will say this, though. You know, as much as we give uh, not Eddie Murphy shit, because I I was was giving uh, Sue here, I was having him crack up because every time. 
Chuck Jeffries, a.k.a. Jake Armstrong, was saying the line I always did to Eddie Murphy laugh. And he's like, stop it, Chris. Stop it. I was like, I can't do it. Like, All because <laughs> I started that shit. I threw, in, like, I threw in one scene where he just turned around and gave, uh, he didn't even get the thumbs up. He's like, I'll see you later. And I just added the laugh and I had Chris dying off of that. <laughs> Look, look, you can do that every time. The only thing I will say, I do kind of laugh at what he did in the movie, was when he broke into homegirl's house just to see where she was at. She's like, did you just break into my house? And I was ready for that nigga to say, bitch, what it look like? I was ready for it. But he did, but he did the best thing. He ignored her. He bypassed her white girl question and just said, um, yeah, it's a nice home. What you want with my boss? Now, here's <laughs> like, the interesting part about it, though. Um, Chuck Jeffries, he is a local stunt guy, and he's done all the Blade movies. He's done Jessica Jones. Also, also I looked stuff. it up. He's a boxer from around here, too. He, he, he boxed around here, oh, too. Oh, Golden Gloves? Yeah, he's a Golden Gloves oh, around shit. here. Cool. Bet. Yeah, the, niggas, the nigga did it. Talk, no, I'm sorry. I stopped you. Talk about who this dude is, man. Uh, this guy is a stunt and a stunt coordinator for all the Blade movies. Um, and you could tell, especially with the way he fights, I'm like, that's some shit Wesley Snipes would do in Blade, easily. You know, um, he did stunts for Spider-Man, uh, he actually was the fight coordinator for the, uh, short-lived, uh, Wesley Snipes NBC show, The Player, which is actually yeah, underrated. A little underrated. Underrated. It was not that bad. Yeah. It was not that bad, but this ain't the first time the word play or player was used on the NBC show and it didn't last that long because yeah. there was this show called Players where it was Ice T and two other white boys. It yeah. was different. It was fun. Nobody watched it. But apparently Wesley Snipes <laughs> takes a liking to him because he's done uh, like all of Wesley Snipes movies, like The Art of War Two, yep. uh, yep. fucking uh, what was the other movie? Um, fucking uh, 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 damn. Oh, all the um, oh, the dude, to yeah. Movies. He did Falcon Rising. I love that movie. That's a Michael John White movie. I'm still over... Like, I still can't get over the fact that he was the fight coordinator for um, for Now You See Me. But here's the thing that gets me with and that... Triple X, our favorite movie. Triple X, State of the Union. Yay. Yeah, that's too. I was just about to say that. <laughs> this motherfucker has done so much stuff and when you... And you notice that he does all the black movies too because, of course, you know, black stuntmen, they're kind of hard to find. So, yeah... He's going to do all the stunt oh, stunt work. Oh man, he did stunts for my favorite, my fave low key movie, New Jersey Drive. Mm. He did, if I am mistaken, he did the stunt. He did the stunt work in one of our favorite movies. And guys, I know what you're going to say. No one ain't deep. Yeah, it is. He did one of our favorite movies, Waist Deep. Yeah, I can see that. Oh shit, he yeah. did stunts for Meteor Man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My man was busy that day. My man was busy in the nineties, dog. He was busy. That nigga went. That nigga was going up and down BWI. <laughs> Bro, same year as fucking no, no, the year before fucking man, year before Honor and Glory. And can you believe it? He also did stunts and juice. Yep. Man, like was, I said, he's coming, it's hard man. to find, and especially you gotta think about it, especially in the eighties and the nineties, it was hard to find a black stunt man. Yeah. So he he was gonna do these bigger movies. Of course he was. Yeah. I, oof, man, this is this is hilarious. But anyway, so I You I, know I, this whole time. And that's the problem about this movie to D. Notice this whole time we're talking, we did not mentioning nothing about Cynthia Roth Roth. Cynthia okay, and Robin. No, I can answer that. Because first of all, in Honor and Glory, this is probably the most the most less Cynthia Roth Rock we see in Shaw. the entire movie. And Robin Shaw. Yeah. Robin and Shaw was in the movie too. He, Top, yeah, you were. No, no, no. See, but if you look at where Robin Shaw shows up in the casting list, he shows up a little later. I'm talking about Cynthia. She's the freaking main headline of this entire movie, they, and she pops up in like, uh -huh. what, what, five or six scenes? They, they literally put a lot of emphasis on Chuck and Donna more than anything they else. They did. Between Chuck and Donna. Yeah. You would think it, this was their movie. Because the whole time I'm like, where's Cynthia at? Yeah. Then she'll pop out of nowhere. I like when she popped out of nowhere. It was either always with her dad or she was doing that weird narration where she just like, where it's like, this is the scene where you're talking to yourself, right? But instead of talking to herself, she's just doing exposition for shit. Because real talk, there's a lot of this movie that shit happens. Shit happens in this movie. But you're sitting there like, okay, what's the plot again? Yeah, Does he want to be president? And, and then, what the, you, what's going on? And then, D, every time she shows up, I would always go, 
Yes. Cynthia showed up with her perfect bob and her 1994 ass. And kicks ass. And look, I got to, you know, shout uh, out. No, no, hold on. I'm sorry, guys. I love, uh, I, I, I knew you wouldn't get this, Harris. Maybe you probably would, but Chris will definitely get this. Um, Shout outs to that. One of the best hats of the out of, of the 90s NFL era. Those style of hats for the NFL. She had a 49ers one. My Bro. dad had one too. <laughs> Man. Dig it. You, like I said, Eric, you don't probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know Those what you're talking style about. Of hats were everywhere, man. Oh my gosh. And the thing of it is, too, the the henchman that uh Slade uses to replace Jake, he's just typical Asian guy that we see in every he's, movie. Yeah, he's the fatter version of that nigga with, with the scar on his face on Rush Hour to me. Yeah, really is. It's like, hey, he's been eating pretty good, so he can still kick ass. <laughs> um, I like how there was one point in the movie where he breaks into the the Asian guy that's working for um, Cynthia and them that's been videotaping everybody. And Dude, he's been crushing on all, he's been crushing on, on was, what's the name? He was, crushing on, he was crushing hard on Donna. Oh, yeah. And, oh, the part I like was when he called, he was like, Donna, I need you to come over here. I'll cook you a big dinner and everything. But I need you to come over here and see the tape. Talk to you later. I'm like, yo, nigga, did you just tell her that you're going to cook her a big dinner? Like, dog, I think the imp- the more pressing thing is what the fuck you have on that videotape. This no. is not a thought for you to say, hey, yo, I'm trying to, you know, you try to get over, lady. You know, I got, you know, I got the new, I got that new Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. If you don't like that action, though, I got that, you know, that, uh, that, Mr. that, that, that uh, gay movie, like. Mr. Not Juntao. Um. <laughs> you mean Mr. Not Juntao? <laughs> Mr. Not Juntao! Juntao! Um, Juntao! <laughs> um, basically... He literally kicks the shit out of our du boy in his living room and stuff. Fucks him up. I'm thinking he's going to kill him, but he's just there to do it. At one point, he literally does the fucking, um, what's, what's the what's the dude from fucking Kill Bill 2? When he jumps on the fucking uh, sword? Oh, yeah. He did the pie may. He did the pie may on dude in the living room, and I fucking died. He did the pie may. Well, of course. No, 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 no. What happened here is the... Well, of course he did that. But dude, <laughs> he ate a fucking bat to his shins like it didn't mean. It. Like, did he put? What's going on here? But the way I he thought was, that was I bad. Way, but I love the way he was swinging was at it. The way he was swinging at it. It took. It looked like. It looked like he was purposely trying not to hurt him. Yeah. It really did, didn't it? Yeah. I like, like. First of all, why are you swinging that many times? And I'm not seeing. I'm not even seeing the wind go past his freaking pant leg. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. I'm hard, like I'm having a hard time buying this scene movie. <laughs> Break my balls here, guys. Break my balls here. Movie, movie. When you said that the movie, y'all, you, know, you just see the messages in the quarter, and it says scene. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, okay, yeah. Like, like I, I really have a hard time. Movie. Here's the movie. Okay. <laughs> Fade the Chainbridge Road. Um, oh god, <laughs> the chain bridge road scene, dude. The reference to and here I'm blah blah blah, and I'm here on chain bridge road. Ah, well, there you go, there you go. There yeah. it is. Oh man, but I like how we get to the final scene, and Slade is literally chilling back in his little Reebok jumpsuit, drinking a Heineken, and he's covering the Heineken logo because he don't want to get hit with them fucking copy strike fees and shit back in the day. Oh God, I hate you. Did y'all see that scene? Yes. Yep. Oh, the Pepsi fucking thing that had the, the Blade, Pepsi logo taped on. up. Slade kicked this nigga so hard. You see a Pepsi machine in the background. Slade hits. He, was it a roundhouse? Cause what, like a jump kick or some jump shit. Jump kick. Yeah, yeah. He kicked that nigga. The motherfucker goes flying to the soda machine. You see on the front and on the side, the Pepsi logo got a big black stripe on that motherfucker. All of a sudden, this group, I'm like, yo, it's too late. Pepsi already coming for your head, man. It's too late. I mean, the logo was obvious. I'm like, what the fuck else is it? Mellow yellow? Fuck no, it's fucking goddamn You know, no, no, here's the thing that makes it so funny, though. The thing that makes it so funny, y'all, I said, why didn't they like, just block out the first one? And it hit me, they weren't going to do that shot again. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, they're clearly like, nah, bro, we, we, are, we are definitely not going to do that and stuff. I'm curious to know uh, what the fucking good, budget good, for this goddamn movie was. The other thing I also liked was uh, was the third act. We get Cynthia 
we get not Eddie Murphy, and we get her <laughs> sister. For, Joan, like, dude, what three we, on one. What we got, what we got right there was 1994's interpretation of like of the Streets of Rage team versus Mr. X. <laughs> the sad thing is, is that the sad thing is because he like because he kicked Homeboy's ass, we didn't get our Shiva. Nah, really didn't. I mean. Oh. I got one question. You know, I see a lot of things happen. I've seen uh, a villain get um, tossed away by a combined me- Kamehameha. I've seen the Ninja Turtles all jump at one time and just kick Shredder in the face at the same time. Even though it's physically impossible, they found a way to do it. I have seen the Transformers straight up dunk on the motherfucker. Uh, the uh, Autobots just dunk on the Decepticons a couple times and shit like that. I have seen some incredible, stupid Japanese shit in rival schools when you do a combined uh, uh, finisher. They wrapped this nigga in a volleyball net. They did. Because Slade was so fucking high or whatever he was, the motherfucker wouldn't go down. Let me make this very clear. This is one of the first times I see a villain Take on three different people and don't fall down. The nigga didn't go down. You know, I, you know, I can wow. Only, and D, I can only think of one other movie that had a laughable, that had a just as laughable fight as this, and that was the third act of King of Fighters. Yes, it was. Yeah. Woo. Yes, it was. Mm. But you know what? I will say this. I will say this. At least kill. At least kill. <laughs> I'm sorry. At least. Curtis Kusanagi. Oh. Curtis I can't Kusanagi. call him Kim. I don't know, Curtis. Uh, Chad Calvin. Kusanagi, you mean he was white, dog. Calvin. Chad. Calvin Chad. Kusanagi. Nah, nah, that's still too black. You got to call him Chad that Kusanagi. Is black. Nah, nah, nah. Uh, Caleb. 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 Caleb Kusanagi. Caleb. Yo, Colby Kusanagi. <laughs> Colby. There you go. Kobe. Anyway, but dog, that's just as bad. It's ter- That's terrible. This was one of the weirdest things. And you know the best part about all this? The cops show up and they're so not cop cars, but they show up, right? And then the news people show up out of nowhere. And my girl Donna, because she a beast like that, who just got into a fight with a big ass drug addict who <laughs> apparently had government secrets and shit. Oh, uh, she gets right in front of the camera with the biggest scoop of her life. I said to myself, huh? <laughs> you missed the part, guys, where the, our being bad guy gets literally, they throw a fucking net on his ass with no effort that's whatsoever. What that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Right? Oh, he threw, first of all, first of all, he gets a net thrown on him. Second of all, after she delivers the news, Silent credit roll. Dude, the credit just hits, and it's like, no, no song, no, no. I got the power. No snap. What, what's going on here? What's going on here? I, like I got the power. I got the power. Listen, no, no, no. How, no, see, first of all, first of all, that movie, that movie does not deserve snap. The movie barely deserves one of the B sides from Technotronic. Can you give me an instrumental from like Rob Bass or something? What's going on? He's <laughs> like a cheap version of Vogue. Do boo 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 fight. Do 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 do. I mean, I have to be honest with you. I'm, I'm mad. Fight. Chuck, I'm, I'm mad. I'm mad. Chuck Jeffries didn't like hook up with like get get some sort of go go music to play in the fucking in the credits or something. That would be nice. No, no, nobody cared about this movie. Also, Robin Shaw didn't really do nothing in this movie. He dressed it. He dressed it. He looked good, dressed in a nice suit, and kicked ass for a minute, and uh, and he exit wounds the homeboy. Uh, he did the same run up the wall and roundhouse kick that he, that he did to uh, that he did to Sub Zero in Mortal Kombat. No, Sub Zero did to his ass. That's true. That, that, that is a hundred percent. Oh my gosh! Now here's Honor the thing. Glory. Now here's a fun here's a fun little connection about Honor and Glory and uh, Cyber Trackers. Cyber Trackers is one of DJ Sue's favorite episodes of Rough Tracks. <laughs> Honor and Glory is actually one of my favorite episodes on Rough Tracks. So I said, we're combining this shit, nigga. First of, like, <laughs> first of all, first of all, what made what made Cyber Trackers so hilarious to watch was the like for me the first time I watched this, I'm thinking 
this was a movie that was made in like 88, 89 or something. And nope. then I, you know, I said, you know what? Hold on. Let me look it up. Cyber trackers. I go to Wikipedia. I'm like, and I say with legit, like with legit confused, <laughs> with, with, like with the sound of legit confused in my voice, 1994. Can I be real about this? Um, it's amazing how the 90s vision of the future is so night and day compared to what the future is now. We're close to 2020 and still no fucking flying cars. We got. We still don't got those weird pipes that go from your under from underneath your exhaust onto the side of your yeah, car for uh, some. We we got sex robots instead of killer robots. That's still creepy to me. Oh, uh, we got well, killer robots. Thank you, Russia. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we got killer robots. They're called drones. Well, also, yeah. Yes, we do. Thank you, Eris. They are called drones. Also, the other killer robots we also got, we looking at the, we, we, we staring at that gun of Japan. You know, we so know they, that shit. Come notice, on. Notice yeah, they went, hold up, D. Notice that they went from Amaro straight to uh, the freaking RX-0 Gundam oh, Unicorn. Wow. I just had oh. a fan fiction moment in my head. Fucking C-130 flying from Andrews Air Force Base, and all of a sudden, sir, something on the radar. Fucking gun to fly out of nowhere, arm intervention. Slice! I'm like, what is going on? That's how it starts. That is how it starts. That is how it starts. Oh, oh, hold up. Hold up. Because there's always one or four of them, because I know millennial um, people in the fucking military. It's going to be that one dude that's flying in the jet and sees the Gundam. He's like, you know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Like, 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 uh, what do you see up there, sir? That's a Gundam! <laughs> <laughs> and then he purposely <laughs> kamikaze himself going into the shield. For I don't PG. know why. He, that's his version of nerding out. I don't know. For PG County. <laughs> What a glory of Zeon! <laughs> look, 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 here's a Zig Zeon! And here's somebody, oh my god. Yeah, I know. He just mixed, he just mixed Zig Zeon with the Gun the Wing universe. That's not the, Zeon doesn't exist. You know what? It doesn't, that's the problem with these fake anime lovers, man. So, oh, it, like, dude, there's a gun out there. Yeah, 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 but fuck all that shit. <laughs> don't let this, hold on, don't let that. Don't let that little bit of confusion right there confuse like confuse the fact that my man just turned uh, Upper Marlboro into a giant parking lot. I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? But but anyway, you know what, Eris? I think there was a filter in the nineties to make everything look older than it was but, because yeah, if it wasn't <laughs> like movie quality, it was in this weird realm of TV quality. And just this much better than a news camera. Well, I mean, I told them that, like, you remember that movie, uh, no, I'm pretty sure you guys remember this movie. You remember that movie, uh, Carnosaur? Yeah. That's what this film style of this movie looks like. Carnosaur, I thought, was in the late 80s. Turns out the shit was right around the same time, 94, 95. Yep. And See, I was like, like this weird quality they had in the 90s of cheap, man. Yeah, and I mean... Word. This is one of those movies, I'll admit, I would not mind if Hollywood remade this movie. If they remade it... Now, hold on. If they remade it, the problem with it is it's going to lack the charm of the original. It'd just be very clean. It's going to be clean. Also, Look at what they did to RoboCop. All right. Also, if you want to be honest with you, Chris, I hear what you say, but Judge Dredd... Okay, Judge Dredd was dope. Dredd, Dredd was dope. I like that one. So, yeah, you're right. Oh, man, I love Dredd. We're going to do that eventually, man. We're going to do both the Judge Dredd. We're going to have to. But here's eventually. the thing, though. Like, so the purpose of this whole move show, this that old Cyber Trackers, which I just laugh at. I was like, this looks like this is kind of what, uh, what the fuck was that Tom Cruise fucking movie? Um, where is in the what? future? Oh, Minority Report. This looks like Minority Report, but with a fucking killer robot. Like, hey, 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 hey you're guilty. Pfft. I'm like, what? Yo, I saw something on there that said, uh, the year is the year in this movie is 2014. Here's me. Pfft, whatever you say, 1993 LA. <laughs> Can you imagine if we took a time travel? Yeah, this is bullshit. This ain't 2014. I've been to 2014. It's all bullshit. I mean, still it's got 
Yo, we still got those shitty VTech keyboards. Are you serious? <laughs> you still have a monitor? You see those monitors? What the fuck? It's a fucking IBM monitor. We did not progress it. at all in technology. Yeah, again, 2014, no goddamn flying cars. Son of a bitch. Like, I told everybody that I talked about this when it comes to fu- uh, the future and what movies predict. If anything, Back to the Future at least predicted 60, Close. no, 60% of the stuff that we saw in the movie, Back to the Future presented, they predicted at least 60% of that shit that actually came true. It came off in a very realistic way, a little bit. It did. Yeah, you have to. But I mean, like how, to, what I mean is how much of compression. what they predicted, like, came true. And I would say about 60% total. Hey, face call, Skype. That's what I'm saying. The holographic shark and shit, we get that. You know, we got 3D movies. Yeah. So it's like this. I think it's just because the 90s, our vision of, like, because you think about, like, during this time period, you had, like, the Outer Limits, and they thought the future was going to be yeah. this dystopia, exactly. and, you know, crazy exactly. shit. You got different, yes, you can have it's different just, taste, and you, you're right, you can have different taste and different, I'm not, I mean, not so much taste, you can do it in different genres and have it fit it, but... The one one funny one of the, one of the best jokes on Family Guy ever came from that same premise where Stewie went into the future with his older self. And Stewie was like, wait a minute, we all the flying cars. What's this? What's this? It's just it's, it's just ten years in the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, it's like which is why it still kind of goes back to uh, to something I remember. Um, <laughs> so. It's something I remember uh, James had said on his on his Back to the Future episode. Uh, it's like, dude, it not. I'm sorry, it wasn't Back to the Future. It was the Street Fighter 2010 episode, where he said, you know, it should better happen. Otherwise, make it the year 3000. Hell, even if you made it the year 2100, it wouldn't matter. We'd all be dead. Better to be a mystery than to be wrong. <laughs> Yo. That is one of the most truest things in the world, man. Oh, man. But, but you know what? We have some good... Everybody likes the dystopian one because everybody thinks that this world is is just like one fucking doomed. thing. Global warming. Ah. My only question... But then again, hold on. My only question, the about, I, my only question about, about, uh, about predicting dystopian futures and all that, how is it that the 80s did it better than you 90s? In what way? Because Escape from New York lied to me. No, 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 New York was made in 1980. That's the thing, actually. Wait, D, hold on, hold on, D, D, hold up. Escape from New York was made in 1980. They said this was 1997. That looked like 1997. (laughs) This was 1997 New York, just empty and at night. But here's the thing about that. Here's the thing about that. Again. It's still dirty as hell. (laughs) Okay, fine, fine, you got me. Dude. Dude, I love how they always do that shit. Like, there's always is that like it's either like a gritty, uh, fucking reality, or it's like some weird type of um. Oh shit! Anyway, <laughs> plane flight. Ah. I know, right? Oh, that's Trump. Fuck you, nigga. <laughs> that's Trump. That is Trump. Fuck him. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yo, you know how much that pisses me off that I got I I can feel that fat motherfucker flying over me sometimes. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> anyway. of which, um, yeah, Trump's not in this movie, but also Don Dragon, fucking Wilson, and Richard Norton, the combo. Nigga, the second I heard like, uh, the second I heard like he's like get into position, but I heard get into position, right? I heard that little little Austrian. Aust- type of uh, voice i'm like oh my god is that is that martial arts master richard norton oh my dear jesus we <laughs> got somebody else off our list richard norton is a goddamn monster y'all and i told I you mean it. i told you and i told you d I said, yo, we got to do cyber trackers one we get don dragon wilson and we get richard norton off the list yeah. Yep. And we really want to, and, and, and I really want that to be our kind of focus because we got to talk about certain people, certain uh, people that a lot of people have either you just don't know about or it's like, oh, you like that? Well, we got to give you this because we're going to get one other person off our list. We're going to get uh, DeCosco 
also off our list. We're also trying to get y'all to like um like Speakman. We did Speakman movie, which Eris came for the motherfucking Hail Mary on that. <laughs> <laughs> because I will never forget looking at that opening credits and I got the power. I lost my <laughs> shit. <laughs> Once I saw, look, look, the opening credits, when I saw the list, that who's who list in the opening credits, I stopped before the song could even finish, and I just sent that video to you guys, and I said, yo, we need to talk about this now. So we're going to do that, and I got a, you know what, look, I got a feeling that we're going to find a good Lorenzo Lamas movie to do. I mean, here's the thing, like. (laughs) <laughs> Much like I said about Honor and Glory, Don the Dragon Wilson facing off against not fucking uh what's the dude uh what's that dude's name? Um fucking uh the, the, the Sandman from fucking uh Lockout. <laughs> um Fuck, I forgot the guy's name. But yeah, bald head version of that dude. <laughs> Constantly throwing Don the Dragon Wilson around. That yeah. one point in the movie. <laughs> yeah, something that CJ and pointed oh, out. Oh, are you talking like, about? So, hold on, are so, you talking about Bruce Payne? Yes. yes. Something that, like, something that CJ had pointed out, which I thought is hilarious because it was so true. How do you establish the character of a t- like? How do you establish the power of a of a towering character when your budget is absolute shit? Throw them around. <laughs> oh shit! And, and, here's, and I know I'm jumping ahead here, Don. Fighting the dude at one point, and I don't My know if they part. and I don't know whether they just said fuck continuity and fuck budgets. Has a bomb in his hand and just inserts it inside of his body. It, it looks like the, just the green screen effect or whatever the fuck effect it was. It was like whoom whoom, <laughs> and it dives and it blows up. I'm like, what? Oh my what? god! I paused the, it. The way- I paused it and looked back at my wife who was watching it with me. I was like. Oh. She was like, "What? I need an answer. I need a fucking answer for that." Let me let me tell what? you. Let me, let me tell you, D. I lose my collective <laughs> shit at the wait what moment every single time I see this movie because I look at this and I say, "This was filmed. This was edited, and this made the final cut." And somebody said, "Print." <laughs> I mean, it's like, yo, it's like, I'm pretty sure Don was like, fuck it. I guess it's good enough. Fine. Cool. That is so hilarious. I mean, you cannot, look, you cannot watch that scene and not laugh at that part. I'll tell you why. You know what, Chris? Hey, Chris, look at me. I'm sorry for what I said about Black Panther and Killmonger. I'm sorry. (laughs) You apologizing me for? I still think it's shit. It's a great ass damn movie. <laughs> yeah, still bad. That scene. Like, that shit is still shit me. No, 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 no. But I forgive you. But I like. I'm sorry that I went hard on it because hand in the in the stomach, bro. How did he know to do that? How did he not do that earlier in the movie? I'm like, but but what what? First of all, what the first fuck? of all, first of all, I can explain that. I I got an answer for that. <laughs> He knew, like, now you say, you're asking, how did he know how to do not, that? How did he not know? Uh, he figured that out when the both of them took that casual jog down the hallway Bruh, to get outside. First off, Don is booking it because clearly he's <laughs> exhausted. I'm fine with that run. Mr. Robot over here fucking just leisurely jogging <laughs> down the hallway, like, ah, la, 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 la. This strolling ass nigga, though, man. <laughs> It's a fucking robot. It's like if Arnold had a fucking casual jaw. It's like if Robert Patrick <laughs> you, and what Terminator What the hell two. was that? <laughs> First of all, that. Now, hold up, time out. Has the Terminator ever ran in a movie? Yeah. 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 Talk about a casual time. run like that shit. The closest thing, okay, the closest thing to a casual run that the original T eight hundred had was when he was running with two machine guns in his hand. From the camera, and, um, and, and, and wait, wait, and wait, and it was shot from the back. It was shot from the back, but from the back, it looked like a casual jog. Don't forget John Connor in, in, in that last uh, shitty ass movie. He did a little brisk run. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, side note, um, I'm so glad we're getting a new Terminator that just says "fuck those third and third movies." In Unfortunately, Sarah Khan Chronicles. Just yeah, ignore that shit. Just eh. that, that's quite unfortunate that they would ignore that series. <laughs> what about Genesis? Fuck you, buddy. No, 
No, no, no. It needs to go. You know what? You know what? I'm going to say it, y'all. I, I hate to say this. I think the next one's going to be bad. But it's James Cameron, D. It's James, it's Cameron. James Cameron. First of all, first of all, first of all, you can't. I can't see this movie being bad when you oh, got. It's not going to be bad. Wait. It's not going to be bad. I can't see this. Wait, D. You can't say that this movie's going to be bad yet because we have the combined, the trifecta of James Cameron, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Linda Hamilton. This is true. Notice that when one is not with the others, the movie sucks. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know. We'll... And according to Arnold Schwarzenegger's Twitter, he's got Edward Furlong in the gym. Oh, so he's not like his <laughs> Green Hornet self, where he just came fresh off the fucking meth lab. Right? Yes. Oh, I love Edward Furlong. When they put him in Green Hornet, I was like, that nigga look like he came straight out of a trailer and just said, all right, we got Edward. <laughs> Film with Christoph Waltz right now. Go. I always wanted to know. I always wanted to know what would Johnny Depp be like if he just said, fuck it. It just did meth from 1992 until now. And then had the fucking nerve to say, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this weird golf thing at the same time. You know what, Ed? Whatever, bro. I'm out. Can but, I just say for the record that somebody that made Angels Has Fallen got Nick Nolte off the set of Ang Lee's Hawk, threw him in a time machine, and jumped into the future? Because he still got the same. <laughs> <laughs> he still has the same beard look from fucking Ang Lee's Hawk and never changed. Man. Nick knows he's trying to live his best life, man, as a as a trash. You know what? I'm sorry. Nick Nolte looks like he digs in trash. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When they showed him, and it's like, well, of course you're Gerard Butler's son. Uh, Why wouldn't he be Gerard Butler's son, Mr. I, I, I talk out the side of my mouth the whole time. <laughs> Sorry, Nick Nolte looks like not Grizzly Adams. That is what he really is. Nick Nolte looks like that guy, that white guy that's always in the corner of a Wendy's, and he's like laying out receipts. Laying out receipts. Speaking of laying yeah. out, speaking of laying out, how about like yeah. how, how about how about we get uh, our girl Connie, uh, aka Stacy Foster, and Cyber Trackers. The fact that she was willing to uh, get laid, literally, by Donna Dragon Wilson after seven of her good friends all got slaughtered. She got over those deaths real quick. Stress fucking. I was sitting there. I look, look, and look, and then it ended. I looked at my wife. I said, but did he earn it? My wife like, <laughs> like no. Did he earn it? <laughs> no. She just needed some dick, D. Like, no, okay. No, 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 all right. No, no, no. No, hold on, hold on. He didn't earn it. But he needed it. Yep. Yep. That's what she said. Uh, no, no, no. They just needed the fuck. That's all that was. Don didn't earn it. And they kissed it. Like, like, stop, nigga. This is, like, not going to happen. Just, just soak it up. It's just for the weekend. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know. No, but but I'll say got, this, though. But I'll say this, though. What, what, what makes this movie. Part of, oh, go ahead. Oh, um. Also, one of the guys that was helping with that little resistance trying to take down the motherfucking uh, cyborgs, which is like, y'all want to lose. And they got rolled. <laughs> All of them got fucking rolled. Each and every one of them got rolled. It was so funny. One, the other big name this, uh, in this um, movie was actually um, one of the, uh, was the cool guy. That girlfriend died or some shit, but he was like the rebel. And so she, I'm like, oh, you mean what Huh? You mean rounds? Yeah, Joseph. No, Hopkins. I think it was Jared or some crap like that. Oh, oh Steve Burton. Burton. Yep, <laughs> Steve Burton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's you know he's a motherfucking uh, daytime. You know he's on um on General Hospital. Mister Fucking, fucking Cloud Strike yep. himself, son of a bitch. Yep. Huh? We got yo. It is so fucking funny. So fucking funny that this nigga got pieced out. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. I'm like, I'm like, shoot the, shoot the propane. Shoot the propane. Boom. Yes. 
Yeah, you know what though? I have to admit though, I'm pretty sure he is so happy. Like, oh my god, daytime move, daytime, daytime. I'm actually making money. Oh my god, this is so great. You know what's so great about him? Now, yeah, he shot the propane tank and popped up again in Cyber Tracker too. Because reasons. Bar. Right. Yeah. He showed up in Cyber Tracker too. Continuity takes a shit in the 90s when it came to these movies. Somebody that you thought might have got stabbed and died and just popped up in the sequel because reasons. Or, no, or, or, the, or the usual, the off-use tactic, and John Woo has done it too, I have a twin brother. Uh, John Woo did that shit in A Better, to- in a better Tomorrow 2. Chow Young Fat's character, he had a twin brother. Just so we can get Chow Young Fat shooting the shit out of everybody again, because why not? You know what? I got a good question. I got a good question. How many, you know, when you go to the video store um, and they had like, you know, certain um, movies had like two or three copies? Cyber Trackers. How many copies do you believe? <laughs> how many copies? You mean like how many copies? Were actually sitting. No, how many copies were actually? How many copies were sitting behind the uh, the movie cover in a video store? I get what you're saying. Uh, what blockbusters? Yeah. Like, hey kids, let's rent Cyber Trackers. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How many do you think were available to rent? I'm gonna say three. I'm gonna say two. I'm gonna say none because Mo Pornay probably bought them all. There you go. <laughs> Shout out to Mo Pornay. <laughs> no much nightmare. No much nightmare. No much nightmare. All right, anyway, I'm done. I'm done. You see, Mo, I did your fucking work. <laughs> you happy now? I work for the white man. I'm sorry. I'm looking Took at me, of my stole. <laughs> me, me, me and Sue are looking at the cover of Cyber Trackers too. Dear God. I mean, this is dear oh. God. <laughs> this is bad. This is eight le- like look, this is eight Stop levels. Stop Don Dragon Wilson looking <laughs> stoic. <laughs> Pointing a gun in the background. So hold on, hold on. How many sequels did this um this um uh, little thing have? Just, just two. two. Oh, okay. Only I'm about to oh, wait, shit. wait, wait, wait. And according to Amazon, you can pick up Cyber Tracker one and two on a DVD combo. Get the <laughs> fuck out of my face with that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much this shit is. Yo, I I I it's bought. Not even it's, it's not even available. It's out of stock. <laughs> it's wait, what? It's out of stock. <laughs> it's unavailable. It's, it's out of print. And it's obviously it's out of print. It's not just out of print. It's the fact that it's also from. It's not even from the U.S. Oh, dude, it's U.K. Man, U.K. eats up all that shit. Come on now. Shout out to the U.K. So that movie was actually in the U.K. It yep. wasn't in America. Yep. No, well, this this uh, this combo tell pack you what, was distributed. Tell you what, I, I was deployed twice, and I got so many bootleg dog in my closet. I got a fucking somebody, and this is ironic considering both of them beefed that beef had basically beef when it came down to the last movies of the franchise. Somebody gave me a DVD that is a Vin Diesel rock combo pack of all their big movies. So I'm pretty sure somebody over there has a DVD combo pack of all Don the Dragon Wilson movies, including both Cyber Tracker movies. I'm pretty sure they do. I'm pretty sure there are people. You like, you like Cyber Tracker as my main man? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, what? Some not. Like this would be the same bootlegger that would sell you DVDs that have like five Jet Li movies crammed uh, into one disc. Exactly. Because uh, clearly. Oh yeah. Hey yo, man. Hey yo, hey yo. Also, I got a question. You look both ways. You got that portable DVD player. You like porn, my nigga? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's Monster Answers fifteen, nigga. Yeah, that's my girl Cherokee. Look, look at that shit. Wow. Yeah, you want that motherfucker? Five dollars. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, five dollars, okay. nigga. Mm. Okay, so if we're talking cyber trackers here, uh, PM Entertainment. Uh. Low budget, high octane American dream. Wow. Did such movies such as the Billy D. Um, Billy D. William Opus, uh, Alien Intruder. Really? Uh, Bikini Summer. Bikini Summer. The Art of Dying. Ring of Fire. And Bloodsport and Blood Fist. I can see, I can see, no, wait. Just off of Bloodsport, I can see where they got all their money. 
Yeah. Yeah, I... Mm, yeah. That's their... Yeah, Ring of Fire apparently was their big... It was their big opus, honestly. But, I mean, granted, Don the Dragon Wilson was their big guy under them, too, so clearly they had something. Golden Globus had... Was it Chuck, Chuck Norris and Charles Bronson? PM Entertainment had fucking Don the Dragon, so... They had, they had but, somebody. And saying it out loud, you know that really is going to an Asian market. You know, the the Asian English market. So that's going to the Philippines. That's going to um, Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. So even if like, so even if he doesn't sell a lot in America, he's going to probably eat, eat really good off the Asian numbers. That's why you can get like a little, even back then, you can get a little bump off of that shit. Yeah. But then again, bootlegging was really bad in the 90s. So he probably didn't make no money out there. So who but knows? I'm just laughing at the fact, okay, so you got these trackers. And it's just a bald-headed white dude from the 90s, clearly. <laughs> and um, only thing missing is a mesh shirt, which is hilarious. Um, and you know, every time he opens up his eyes, doom, 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 reach out and touch face. <laughs> <laughs> But nah, it's like they're shooting guns that are supposed to be futuristic guns that clearly don't do shit. Futuristic guns. Please, all they were, like, all they were were, uh, were freaking desert eagles with laser scopes that they color black. It <laughs> don't take too much. Man, I got, I got to be honest with you. I said something really, really stupid um, during the shooting scenes. I said, wow. Hey, and I was telling my wife, hey, baby. Um, I didn't know that nine millimeters carry up to fifty-five bullets in one chamber. And my wife said, "You said infinity bullets wrong, D. <laughs> Nobody. It's Hong Kong changed. shotgun, dog. You don't reload. <laughs> Nobody reloaded in this movie." Oh my god, it's so hilarious, man. I like how the doctor was like, I can't shoot! I can't shoot! And then he started firing back and out of nowhere. Bam! Dead in the head. I died laughing. I mean, yo, shout out to the fact that at the end of the movie, Don decides, ah oh, shit, I'm gonna shoot the fucking senator. <laughs> <laughs> that part was great. I'm like, what are you doing, Don? And then all of a sudden, he's a tracker, and there's your cliffhanger. And I like how the one news guy was like, "Oh my God, he's a robot." Now you want to know the fun, like you want to know the real fun part about that. And Rip Tracks brought this up. How did he know that he was a robot? What if he actually shot him and actually and legit killed him? Credits. I mean, <laughs> Credits. I got the power. <laughs> 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 You still trying, Yo, you still, so, on, from so you still try, practice, you still ain't gonna get no black You still try to give them credit, of, like the credit of having such a, a legendary song in this movie. First off, if I was filming this movie, that would be my ending. Like, he's a tracker! You see red blood on the ground, it's like, no sir, you got life in jail. I'm fucking the car. <laughs> fucking the car, right now. Oh, I'm done. Yeah. Get it right now. I did like how at the end, at the end the senator... <clears throat> like the said, like um, <laughs> Senator Bob the freaking Dilly. Senator Dilly, Dilly took off. Dilly. He took off. Dilly, said, Dilly. He Dilly, Dilly, took, Dilly, 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 Dilly. He took off and said, "Screw." He's like, "Hey, screw this crap. I know that Don Dragon Wilson is the main hero. He's gonna get out of this clean. Probably gonna get like, like probably gonna run, like, probably gonna run off with this young upstart skank who's been like who pretty much ruined everything by throwing a monkey wrench in my entire operation." So I'm just gonna go ahead and take off. I'm gonna let my ch- like I'm gonna let my side chick here, who who I might have been slamming on the side, you know, but the movie didn't tell that because fuck story and, and fuck continuity. So I'm gonna take off and go to Hawaii. That's where I went. And what showed up? And what showed up at his doorstep with two Hawaiian chicks on his arm? Like I am Cyber Tracker number one eighty three. Hawaii eight a.m. Cyber Tracker. <laughs> now you know what I like that he ran off to Hawaii when that clearly looked like the South Side of Malibu. No bullshit, nigga. That, you know what that wasn't Miami. They were still in the back. He was still in the backstage lot. <laughs> that was straight. That was <laughs> Malibu. Like I, that was, dude, that was Malibu. Like I don't know what. I was like Hawaii, my ass. 
Oh, God, this film ain't like they had something. <laughs> hey, yo, shout out to Don's fight. Like, when, whenever he had to actually fight regular people and stuff, he was, like I said, he's doing typical Don and Dragon stuff. But homeboy that he fought before the tracker woke up had me rolling because he's get clearly looking tired. Dude, that was it. That was Richard Norton. Yeah, Richard Norton <laughs> and him were fighting it out, basically doing the Rocky impersonation of punching each other to see who's going to fall down first and shit. Don has no shirt on because reasons. <laughs> No, he has no shirt on because that's his contract. Uh, yeah, it's under, under his contract, he has to have no shirt on at least two times minimum. Not and even two. Like, throughout this movie, we've seen him shirtless in that extremely long, unnecessarily filmed shower scene. Where he's like this. Yeah. He's like a, like a fucking wall. horrible R&B video and shit. <laughs> we get that. And, of course, there was the, uh, the pity stress sex. And... Then, and of course, the fight. My man gets his shirt ripped off. He's got to like, he's got to fight Richard Norton, who, by the way, drinking game. Every time Richard Norton says "amateur," take a sh- like, take a drink, please. It's amateur. <laughs> amateur. Uh, amateur. Enough, you'll you... always be an amateur. Ah, uh, whatever. You... No, it was something that he said. I was like, man. Uh, no, it was something he said. Like, man, fuck you, you. You you blue you blue bit onion eating <laughs> Phil Collins listening <laughs> Dingo ate your baby, a, huh? <laughs> yeah, like, mama was a mama was a kangaroo, daddy was a motherfucking Tasmanian devil ass nigga. <laughs> That's not a knife, this is a knife. <laughs> Bitch motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god, man. But it's like at one point, they're fighting each other, and all of a sudden, Don finishes them off with the fuck was it, the elbow to the face, where he's just like, like oh, fuck it. Fuck you. <laughs> that lazy looking elbow shot. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I know, when he did it the first time, I said exactly this. Oh, man, I hope you do it one more time, this time with emphasis. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah, this movie is ridiculous. That definitely Holy ridiculous. Stupid. Now here's the thing. I I, I I find it funny that somebody dared put Cyber Tracker in theaters and then all of a sudden directed video sequel Cyber Tracker 2. I'm like, wow, so it didn't have enough money for a sequel to go into theaters, but the first one did. What the fuck? Hey, who knew? Well, actually, you know what? No, you do this movie and you made no money. <laughs> Alright, let's put it in whatever theater we can do it on. Alright, y'all? First of all. Like, first of all, the fact that TV Guy rated this movie two out of four stars, Terminator. called it a Terminator <laughs> knockoff with a better script than the typical low-budget action film. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You believe that this movie had a script? I don't think it had a script. I don't think it did either. I don't think it had a script. script was, you know what? They I, had a script. I, it was written in crayon, and it was basically the director <laughs> saying, cut in, in bold green. Like, yo, I don't, whatever, whatever. That's, you know what? In fact, he wrote script on a piece of paper and said, there's your script. That's basically what happened. So, I mean, it's. Like Terminator with a better script. What? Whatever. Whatever. Beggars can't be choosers, D. I mean, this is TV God. And, you know, that's the place to go to for hard-hitting criticism of movies. So, you know. Back in the day. Oh, no. Daniel McKenzie has been working there for 35 years in television. He knows what he's talking about. How else would I know that my wife and kids... (laughs) My wife and kids help the Negroes. How else would I know about that? Oh, man. This guy has done so many knockoff movies. It's ridiculous. L.A. Heat, which is a.k.a. Not Lethal Weapon. Jeez. Don the Dragon Wilson is low-rent John whoa, Carter. Whoa, whoa. Time out. This motherfucker did Hot Boys. He produced that fucking movie? Yes, he did. Wow. Wow. He did Hot Boys, did didn't we? Uh-huh. We never mentioned him, though. So, uh, he also did L.A. Heat. Yeah, the the not Miami Vice. Yep. <laughs> not Lethal Weapon. <laughs> with the black dude from 21 Jump Street. It's like a bad... If I'm mistaken, that's that movie with the bad... Um, TV show. Huh? TV show. Yeah, TV show. 
Oh, no, nah, nah, I don't know. LA Heat, that one. Yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. This guy has... Yo, he, did, he came back to do Cybertrackers 2. Hologram Man, a.k.a. Not Lawnmower Man. Um, <laughs> yeah, he did all... Yo, yeah, he's another uh, PM production fucking person because he did uh, Ring of Fire movies. And he did Maximum Force. And Alien Intruder. Yeah, he's their guy. And Fist of Honor. Oh, and the, uh, and the uh, Bruce Willis movie, Last, Last Man Standing. Standing. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Wait, Wait a minute, they did that? that? Uh-huh. Yeah, but yeah, don't don't watch Cyber Cybertrack, folks. You you no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, 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 no. Don't tell them not to watch it. You must watch this movie with alcohol. Yes, with alcohol, just to get through it. Just get through it. Be good. Be fine. I mean, you be fine. It's because... not a sit. I will give it that. The movie's not a sit. But holy shit, do you you just want to punch somebody after you watch it? Can't be Both honest. of these movies had that feeling to me. Can't be real about this, man. I see all these movies and then I ask myself if I had a time machine, I would go back and write better versions of these movies and kick up money. <laughs> some of these you're right. Yeah, some of these you're you're exactly right now. Then again, uh, I, I, then again, I'll pull a fucking um, homeboy from Hot Tub Time Machine. I'll just repurpose it to movies that didn't come out yet to make it better. Yep. <laughs> wow. Oh man, Craig Robinson, his character had the smartest man. He, he did Black Eyed Peas and then Black Eyed Peas didn't exist in the future. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> did Let's Get It Started in the fucking 80s. And I'm like, how the hell did he do that? Oh my god. Hey man, he always wanted to be a rapper, so. Yeah, it is. So. But, anyways, uh, D, so, so what's next on the, for the folks? That's when D. Walks up to the peak of the mountain, looks down upon others who are beneath him. All of them prisoners in the same realm as him. And he looks at the camera and he says, I am you all! I'm nobody's bitch! You we are fucking doing mine. Fucking one! Uh, We're the following movie, one. The movie that, thanks to one, Brian Caput, he gave me a bootleg version of that movie. <laughs> and I loved every minute of it. And, uh, yeah, that was a movie that Jason Statham was in. You, you want to talk Statham. about... Uh, first of all, that was... First of all, we got another trifecta. We got Jet Li, Delroy Lindo, and Jason Statham. With special guest appearance by Carly Guino. Yo, we got so much, you know, me and Eris and our boy Ty had so much meme material from that fucking movie. <laughs> we did. So, um, that, that's kind of funny. I, that's really what it was for me. I only seen the movie once through, no, twice. I seen it twice through. And I keep on seeing the club, you know, him, ver you know, Jet Li versus Jet Li. You know what I mean? That's all I seen. Mirror match. But. <laughs> so this is gonna be funny to go through again. If I'm not mistaken, we're gonna be doing that with Duke. Mm -hmm. I I want Duke on that one. He's I'm hoping that he's free when we can you know f figure out time and all that. But anyway, but yeah, that's the next one. And I'm hope and hopefully I'm planning to do. Um, hmm. I think we're gonna do only the Brave next, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure it out. So yeah, the one. It's next. It's happening. Right. Stay tuned, folks. <laughs>